Hey everyone, today I thought I would try out a tutorial to show people how to get a low poly character that I took from another engine into Mixamo, get it animated, and then get it to CryEngine. The reason this comes from a question that was asked in Discord, and I've seen other similar questions. And I know it can be kind of difficult sometimes to get a character into CryEngine. Um, I've done it a bunch of times, and so I thought I would just share that expertise today. So to start, um, we'll be using Mixamo to rig our character and to animate, get the animations. From there, we're going to go to Blender, and we're going to use Blender to reorientate the animations so they look good in CryEngine. We don't have to do any coding to get them to orient it correctly in CryEngine. And then we're going to import them into CryEngine. So um, first thing you'll need to do is have your model ready and have Mixamo. And what we'll do is we'll go up here to upload character. Then you want to find your model. Um, for me, I do not have rigs on my models. I, I take them off because they can cause issues. Sometimes Mixamo recognizes the rig and applies the animation correctly to the rig that the model has. A lot of times there's an issue. Um, with this model, I believe there's an issue. So I just took it into Blender and removed the armature from it. So it's just it's just a mesh. There's no, no skeleton underneath it. And I'm going to let Mixamo do that for me. So to do that, uh, you just drag and drop the file, the FBX file, into the upload character tool that they have here. It's going to populate it. Um, you are going to see it's a little weird. It's translucent. And that's just because I took it into Blender first. And now the material is a little messed up because I did that. But the model is loaded. And then now we want to rig it. Uh, normally, sometimes, Mixamo will auto-rig for you, so it'll figure out where all the parts are automatically and just do that for you. In this case, it didn't, but it's no big deal. We can just apply that ourselves. So we just take the tools, we tell it where each part is. So there are the wrists, uh, the elbows are probably somewhere around there, the knees are likely around there, and then the groin will be about there. And then the next thing I do before next is select the skeleton. So the standard skeleton is, you know, the one with all your normal bones, all five fingers. With this, it, there's options for less, especially when you're doing low poly, you usually have like mittens. As you, if I click on this, you'll see here, this is one where it's usually got the three fingers, the index, and the thumb. Um, this model specifically doesn't have that set up. It's set up to be like a mitten where it's just four fingers and the thumb. So we'll use that as a skeleton for this one. We'll go ahead and hit next, and then it's going to auto-rig it. Uh, this can take up to two minutes. So we'll just wait for it to do that. All right, so it's finished rigging the character for us and puts a little animation on there so that we can quickly look at just to make sure things look okay, which from here they do look okay, except for you know, the material being translucent and everything. So we'll go ahead and hit next and it'll load it up into this viewport and it'll automatically set it with the animation. Right here we have just a, some kind of idle animation going on. We'll change it up to something different though. We'll do um, an idle, fighting fight something somebody had their fists up that looked kind of cool yeah there we go so a little karate character so we have our animation here um with when it comes to CryEngine, just a quick note is don't select the packs i know that mixamo has these giant packs with a bunch of animations the problem with those packs is they do not skin every animation usually it's one skin mesh and then all the animation files, which is just data. Like this pack here, for example, where it's just got like 16 animations. The problem is CryEngine only accepts animations with skins attached. It doesn't accept just the animation data like some other engines might do for you. So you have to download each individually. There's no packs here. So you'll select the animation you want, you hit download. And what you wanna do, like I said, is you want with skin, never do it without skin for CryEngine. Um, frames per second will leave the same, everything else, FBX and everything will leave the same. Download that. Then we will save this and we'll save it with the other one and we'll just say um, Mixamo idle. Idle Mixamo. It's better that way. And we'll go ahead and save that. The next thing uh, I like to do is take it into Blender. And the reason for this is I can add another root bone that usually sets it up to look better. And then the second thing is orientating it. So if I were to just drag and drop it into CryEngine now, it'll be oriented wrong, it'll be facing the wrong direction, um, and that would just cause issues down the line where I'd have to manually fix it in code, and it's easier just to get everything correct from the get-go. That way you don't have to fiddle with that later. So um, what I do next is I go ahead and open up Blender, 
And then we'll go ahead with the new scene. I don't use any of the tools, unfortunately, so I can't help you with Autodesk or anything like that. But if you are familiar with the tools, it's basically just do the same thing here where you'll just uh, import the FBX. We'll go ahead and find it, Mixamo 01. Um, a couple of settings for Blender users. Uh, the one thing I like to do is first go to Armature and ignore leaf bones. There are extra bones that get added to like the end of fingers and skeletons and stuff. You don't use them at all. You don't need them. They just look tacky. So I just remove them. They might cause issues down the line. I can't remember, but I know I always remove them because they're not needed. And then next is automatic bone orientation. Uh, this is just how the bones look when looking at the rig. It, it doesn't affect anything. It's just appearance wise it looks more like a skeleton instead of weird facing direction bones we'll go ahead and import that with those settings and then if we look here to the coordinate system you'll see why um a quick note is cryengine's coordinate system x to the right y forward z up it's different than other engines you know unity was z forward y up and i think unreal is the same way so with CryEngine though, it's Y forward, X to the right, Z up. Remember that because that's the way you want your characters to face. So you can see he's not facing Y forward, he's facing Y back. So we'll just rotate him around. Um, you'll just come in here and set whatever rotation, you know, if you imported the character and they were facing like this, for example, um, and you want him face up, you would just rotate him. We need to be rotated 90 degrees on the X and then 180 on the Z and that gets him facing the direction we want. Once you've got those rotations, control A, that applies them. You want them to apply it to the armature. Otherwise, you'll have issues when you import it into CryEngine. You know, your animation won't be oriented correctly. So apply rotation. And then now it'll reset them back to zero, but zero is facing that way, which is what we want. So the next thing we want to do is we want to add the new root bone and then save it. So. To do that, um, first let's see the bones. They're there, but they're kind of hidden behind the mesh. So to display them, you can go over here to Object Properties, go down to Viewport Display, and then click in front. In this way, they're now showing. Then if we hit Tab, that switches us to Edit Mode. You can see it here, Object to Edit Mode. And then we want to add a new bone. So Shift A, or you can come up here and hit that little button there. So that adds a new bone for us. Um, one thing I want to do is shrink it down. It's a little too big. I don't like the bone being it kind of blocks the rest of the skeleton. So we'll uh, you can hit N to go into the properties, or you can come over here to the drop down um, if you have the bone selected. Or you have to select it first, and then yeah, if you press N, it loads it, and you just change the length and just shrink it down a little bit, and that way it's not in the way of everything. And then the next thing we want to do is click on the hips, and then click on the new bone we just added. Always do it in that order. Don't do it the other way because we want to parent the hips to the new bone. We want the new bone to be the main parent of all of them. So we'll go ahead and parent, which is Control P, or just right click and go to the drop down, and we'll make. Oops, and then you want to keep it offset. If you do connect it, it'll just connect the two bones together, and we don't want that. We want them kept at this distance where they are right now. After doing that, you go into Armature over here. And we're going to rename it to root. Um, you don't have to do that. I do that just that way it's always in my mind that there's this bone structure or bone setup. Um, naming is important when it comes to CryEngine. If all the bones are the same name, then the skeleton is... If you did another model and brought it into Mixamo, that was different. But it created, it rigged the skeleton for you and all the bones were the same. The animations will work between the models. So keeping the animation, keeping the skeletal naming structure the same means that different animations work for different models. So that's a key thing to learn for CryEngine. So we've done that. We've named it root. We'll go ahead and export the file as an FBX. We'll go back into our folder here and we'll do uh, blender idle. Idle blender. No. All right, and then a couple of settings. First, we do not want leaf bones again. Just that they're not necessary. We don't want to add them. The second thing is, is I changed the transform here. Uh, y is forward, Z is up. So those are the two things. No leaf bones. Make sure that the transform is set correctly as according to what CryEngine is. Then we want to export it. So we have went ahead and exported that. We can go into our CryEngine now. Uh, this is a project I just created. It's just a 
blank C++ project. I've not done anything to it. We'll go ahead and go to our objects folder. We'll create a new folder. We'll call this one characters. Double click that. New folder. We'll call this one low poly model. And then we'll find our low poly one, the blender one that we just fixed. Drag and drop it in. We'll wait for that to process. And you'll see we'll get a bunch of different icons here. So this is our mesh file here, as you can see. And then the this is the skeleton. That's a little skeleton icon. These two, these type of icons are animation files. So this is the T pose or the base pose, and that'll be included. And then this is the animation that we did with the little idle one. And then here is a skin file. So that's if like you had a character with a bunch of different skin parts, um, they would show up here and they'd be something you can add or remove in the character tool. And the character tool is under tools, animation, character tool. And if we go over here, Double click on our idle blender character, character definition file. We have them here and you can see if you look at the coordinate system down bottom left, uh, green is Y forward, uh, red is X to the right, Z blue is up. And it's facing exactly in the direction we wanted it to. That's exactly what we wanted. So now it'll be easier down the line when it comes to setting up your character gameplay wise. And then uh, here it'll show the animation. And if we click on that, we have a working animation that is facing in the right direction. So we have this and you know you can even put it in the world if you wanted to. So if we go into levels, we'll just load up the default level. You can go here and drop the mesh in there. But as you see here, it's not animating. Um, the mesh doesn't, uh, static mesh doesn't animate. And if you drop the animation in, there's uh, nothing there. You have to actually have, um, an entity or a mesh to go with it. So to do that, what we could do is we could take a empty entity, drop it in. We can add an advanced mesh. Uh, no, 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 we don't want advanced. So advanced animations are for what you would want in the long run, uh, That's but you'll need more files to get that to work. You need like a database file and uh, profile and stuff from the, like for the mannequin and stuff like that. So we're not gonna do that right now. We just wanna show an animation in the world. So we'll use the animated mesh component. And that lets us select a mesh first, character definition file specifically. And then the second is the animation that we wanna showcase. And if we click on that, there we go. We have our character animating in the world. You'll see he stopped and that's just cause he's not on loop. There we go, he's now looping. Now, if you want another animation um, from the same model into CryEngine, what you would do is you'd go back into Mixamo here then you would find a new animation. So we've got them fighting here. Maybe we want a, I don't know, a high kick or something, right? That's under this. Let's, let's, let's have them do that. That looks cool. So you select that animation, hit download, make sure it's with skin, keep everything else the same. Wait for that. Then save that as a kick Mixamo know which file it is then we want to go back into blender which we have here and we're going to do a new file we're not going to save that that one's finished we're going to clear out everything we go to file import fbx we will find the kick idle no kick mixmo remember we want to ignore leaf bones automatic bone orientation import it we see that it's facing the wrong way so we flip that around with 180 degrees on the z axis Control A to apply, just the rotation only. Now it's facing the right direction. We can't see the bones, so we wanna go down to viewport display in front, hit tab to switch to edit mode, shift A to add the new bone, select the bone, hit N, so we can go to the properties and change its length. Then we wanna click on the hips first, then the new bone, because that's gonna be the main parent. We're gonna control P to parent them, and then keep to offset. We'll go up to here. Remember to keep the naming conventions the same so their skeletons are recognized. Then we've got that all set up so we can export FBX back into the file here. We'll select kick um, grind. No, we will uh, kick blender. That's right. We're trying to keep the same. Um, again, we want to do Y forward, Z up. Then we're going to do armature, ignore leaf bones. We don't want those. We don't want those leaf bones on there. Then we'll go back into CryEngine. 
here we're going to do something different instead of dragging and dropping the new file into here because then it'll import the mesh and the skeleton and all that stuff again we don't want to do that we want just the animation so what we do is we come into the tools we go to fbx import animation we have a little thing here you can load the file um, or what you can do is drag and drop it that's my preferred method of doing things we want to do kick blender in blender wait for it to load it's got the file here if you hit preview and there we go, we've got our mesh and our animation. We'll go ahead and name that. We'll do kick, name it kick, keep it simple. We'll go to objects. We'll put it in the same location as the model and the other animations for right now. We can close that out. Then if we go back into tools, character tool, and we wanna reload the character, so double click on it and not being friendly, showing that. So what we might have to do is reload the level. Sometimes you just do that. Save it, load the level. Make sure character tool. No, one second. And sorry for that jump cut there. Just forgot. Normally when you add a new animation and stuff, sometimes you have to reload. So if you had multiple characters in the character tool, what you could do is just simply double click on something else and then click back on your character and it'll automatically reload the parameters file and therefore the new animations will show up. But if you don't have that option, um, the way to reload the parameter file, sometimes you, I mean, I guess you could like close out of uh, CryEngine and come back into it. But another way to do that is you, if you have your console log, you can come over to console log, type CA um, and then underscore, and then you wanna reload all character parameters and that's just the file that's the file where it like gets the information like the animations and stuff and just press one for true and then hit enter and that'll reload all the information to the character parameters file for you and then that way the new animations will show up and so now when we go here um, we have the idle but then you also see that the kick is now there so if we press it we have both using the same model it's now got the kick in that. As you can see here, we have the T pose, and then we have the two animation files, the idle and that one. And then here in the world, if we go down to the animations, the CAF file, we can put the kick in the world, or we can do the idle. And there you go. So that's how you can get a model from anywhere into Mixamo, get it rigged up, get animations, reorientate them in Blender, and then get them working in CryEngine. And I hope this helps out some new developers in getting their characters into CryEngine. And let me know what you think. Thank you.